In the previous examples, we put all of the data that we wanted to plot on a single set of axes. However, we can separate different series of data into subplots. Creating subplots allows us to plot data series on different sets of axes. When we do this, the y-axis scales are usually independent. However, by default, the x-axes are the same size on each of the plots. The basic object type in matplotlib is a figure, and this represents the entire graphic. We can control the overall size of the figure through a fig size equals argument when we instantiate the figure. The figures can have multiple subplots, which are referred to as axes. This is a bit confusing because I tend to think of the axes as being the x and y axis in a particular plot, but in this case, axes are a term to refer to the subplots themselves. So when we create subplot instances, we often see ax being used as part of the object name for the subplots. The subplots within a figure can be organized in rows and columns. Usually we specify the numbers of rows and columns and their orientation directly, but it is possible to create a NumPy array of subplots, and then we can generate the data in those subplots programmatically. Let's begin by importing pandas and matplotlib and create a figure object. In this figure object, we are going to add two subplots called axes 1 and axes 2. The order of the arguments within the add subplot method describe how the subplot should be oriented within the plot. If I put 1 and then 2, that means I'm going to have one row and two columns. And then the third argument indicates which of the subplots this particular subplot is. In this case, I didn't put any data into the subplots, but we can see how they are organized. If I reverse the order of the first two arguments, then you will see that the subplots are organized vertically. In this particular code cell, I included an extra command, plt.show. In a Jupyter Notebook, it's not necessary to include this because the Jupyter Notebook will automatically display the plot in the space below the cell. But if you're not using Jupyter Notebooks, if you're using a standalone Python script, you have to include this command, and it will open a pop-up window that displays the graph that you're creating. Let's create some plots with real data by reloading the COVID-19 data from the New York Times GitHub site. We are going to limit this to the first 50 days. So let's slice that out and give it an object name called first cases. Once again, I'm going to set up a plot with subplots. One thing that you should note is that plots are reset after every cell. So the setup code for instantiating the figure and the axes has to be repeated in each cell and all of the code that creates that plot has to be included within a single cell. Here's the setup, and now I'm going to create a line plot. As was the case with the plotting in pandas, we can use the plot method. In this case, we want to specify two arguments. The first argument is the x value, and the second is the y value. I'm going to use the index, which in this case is just simply numbers from 1 to 50, and then the case data is going to be the y-axis. I can specify the color of the lines, the style of the lines, and the kind of marker for the data points by using these arguments here. There's a wide variety of ways of controlling the line display, and the colors can be specified in several different ways. I can also use the setTitle method to put the title cases with axis number one. Axis number two is similar, except instead of using the cases column, I'm going to use the deaths column. And here, for no particularly good reason, I chose to specify the column using the dot notation. I could have also specified it in this way. When I run this, I get two separate subplots. And as I noted before, they share the x axes, but the y axis scales are independent of each other and the markers are those that I chose, X's and O's, with the appropriate colors and line style. 